You know, finally, a look at fake news. Yes, I wish we could ban that phrase, but it's here to stay. So how good are we at figuring out what is fake and what is real? Some computer scientists at the University of Michigan think they've come up with a cool program that figures it out for us. Let's head to Ann Arbor. We record when we deal with reporters. It's called fake news. The president has his fake news, the New York Times, CNN. Then there's real fake news. Plans in the Upper Peninsula for another Disneyland theme park. The two guys in Canada who landed a giant shrimp. We're gonna call the aquarium a something, dude. And the Ohio woman who taught her 65 cats to steal from her neighbors. We've been seeing how it affects uh, society, the spread of fake news. It can influence people's decisions. And it's also an interesting phenomenon in itself. Why would people lie and why, what would they lie about? In Ann Arbor, University of Michigan researchers Redea Mahalzia and Veronica Perez Rosas are fascinated by liars and the ways to detect them. They're computer scientists, and now they've got a program that can spot fake news. We collected examples of fake news and real news, and then we fed them to an algorithm that started to learn. It it looks at sequences of words, it looks at the structure of sentences, it looks at the types of words, uh, and then we'll determine whether it's likely to be fake and, or not. Uh, we have here the news headlines and the news content. A side-by-side -side test, one story fake, the other real. The researchers found fakers use personal pronouns, less I's or we's, more he's or she's. Here, stories about Roger Federer, one claiming the tennis star's opponent was distracted during a match. So this is the fake news, has the personal pronouns, so you see he's, uh, like third person personal pronoun. Also some of the exaggeration, like necessary, or piercing scream, or deaf as well as blind. The use of punctuation, for instance, we have noticed that fake news had a heavily use of exclamation marks, question marks. So this is the, um, the right one? Is the they one say their algorithm gets it right 75% of the time, compared to real people who catch the fakes at a rate of 70%. But that requires people with a suspicious eye in the first place. And one person's satire can be another one's news. No, there is no breathing tax in California, but online this fake story has 200,000 shares so far. The fake news are very predominant, mainly on the social networks. For instance, recent uh, surveys have not identified that there is a big quantity of outcoming links from Facebook or for Twitter that goes directly to fake news websites. Weeks before the midterm elections, Facebook added a crew of specialists to root out fake stories before they spread. Now, some fakers have been removed, but it's kind of a game of whack-a-mole, where more just take their place. So there might be more just because there is more news, period. I'm not sure if it's as a fraction of the news, if it's more or less. That I don't know. But because there is more news, even if the fraction was the same as it used to be, we have more fake news just because of that growth. Maybe you saw this one, where Kid Rock and Ted Nugent raised millions to fight the war on Christmas. It probably won't clear the U of M test, but it's got a big clue here in small print. A little bit of truth on a screen full of fakery. You know, if only the stealing cat story from Ohio was true, I was counting on that one.